In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about glycogenesis. If we look carefully, there is a glycogen and genesis. That means synthesis of glycogen. The location of this pathway is in the cytosol. Because all the enzymes which are responsible for glycogenesis, they are found in the cytosol only. If we look at the tissue level, this pathway occurs in all the tissues. However, maximum glycogenesis occurs in the two tissue. One is liver and second one is skeletal muscle. Now let us see the reactions of glycogenesis. In the first reaction, glucose gets converted to glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction is irreversible in nature and it is catalyzed by either glucokinase or hexokinase. Glucokinase is present in liver only whereas hexokinase is present in all the tissue including skeletal muscle. Now in this reaction, one phosphate is derived from the ATP and it is transferred to the glucose. So glucose converted to glucose 6-phosphate and ATP itself gets converted to ADP. The purpose of this reaction is that that glucose 6-phosphate is not permeable in cell membrane whereas glucose is easily permeable across the cell membrane. So once glucose is irreversibly converted to glucose 6-phosphate then this molecule remains permanently trapped inside the cell. Once glucose 6-phosphate is formed it undergo reversible reaction to give rise to glucose 1-phosphate. Here you can see the phosphate molecule is just changing its position within this glucose molecule. Initially it was at the 6th carbon, now here it is on the 1st carbon. So this is simply isomerization reaction and this reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglucomutase. Phosphoglucomutase. Now once glucose 1 phosphate is formed, it gets converted to UDP glucose. This UDP is the uridin diphosphate. This UDP it is derived from the UTP that is ur uridine triphosphate. This UTP it reacts with glucose 1 phosphate and it loses its 2 phosphate in the form of this pyrophosphate. So PPI this represents pyrophosphate. So uridine triphosphate it is removing its 2 phosphate so ultimately we are getting uridine monophosphate. This uridine monophosphate gets one more phosphate from this glucose 1 phosphate and gets converted to uridine diphosphate and glucose is already there which is bound with this UDP. So ultimately we get uridine diphosphate glucose molecule. Remember this reaction is theoretically reversible reaction but practical purpose this is totally irreversible reaction in the direction of glucose 1 phosphate to uridine diphosphate glucose molecule. Why practically it is irreversible? The reason is that, that as soon as this pyrophosphate is formed, it is immediately broken down to two inorganic phosphate and this irreversible and immediate reaction is carried out by the pyrophosphatase. Pyrophosphatase. So because of this reaction, this reaction essentially becomes irreversible. And yes, one more thing that this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. It is UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. So the name of this enzyme, it is based on actually on the products. Now UDP glucose which is formed in this step, it is very very important molecule. Why it is important molecule? The reason is that, that this molecule can act as a donor of glucose moiety. So this molecule essentially it can donate glucose molecule to other compound. Now to understand its next subsequent reaction, we have to understand one important protein that is glycogenin. So glycogenin is a protein. Suppose this box represents glycogenin protein. In this glycogenin protein at the 194th location there is one important amino acid it is named as a tyrosine. This tyrosine it has its uh, active group it has hydroxyl group. So we generally represent hydroxyl group of this tyrosine like this. Now in addition to this important amino acid in this glycogenin Glycogenin contains two important enzyme activity. So this is one active site and this is second active site. This active site, it has an activity of glycogen initiator synthase. 
ग्लाइकोजन इनिशिएटर सिंथेस वेर इज दिस एंजाइम एक्टिविटी इज द चेन एक्सटेंडिंग एक्टिविटी चेन एक्सटेंडिंग एक्टिविटी नव वॉट एपेंस दिस यूडीपी ग्लूकोज इट रिएक्ट विथ दिस ग्लाइकोजेन इन दिस बोथ रिएक्ट विथ इच अदर एंड दिस यूडीपी ग्लूकोज इट ट्रांसफर्स ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल टू दिस हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप ऑफ दिस टाइरिसन सो अल्टीमेटली वॉट एपेंस दिस इज ग्लाइकोजेन इन मॉलिक्यूल नव हियर इन इन दिस हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप this hydrogen atom gets replaced by the glucose so this is the oxygen atom of the tyrosine and it is in turn bound with the glucose now this reaction this udp gets released and this reaction is catalyzed by this glycogen initiator synthesis so as you can see in this reaction this glycogen in molecule it is acting as a enzyme as well as it is acting as a substrate also right so we can say that glycogenin is the auto catalyst it is activating its own reaction now once this compound is formed it further undergo reaction in which more and more udp glucose comes and transfer its glucose molecule to this compound and udp gets release now this reaction what will happen this is glycogenin this is oxygen and this is one glucose molecule and by this extra glucose molecule will be added to this glucose and this reaction is catalyzed by the chain extending activity of this glycogenin so this second enzyme activity catalyzes this next reaction by this chain extending activity of glycogenin approximately 7 to 8 new glucose molecule can be added to this compound for the sake of discussion of this reaction let's consider it is adding seven glucose molecule so seven udp glucose is required and seven udp gets released and here seven more glucose will be added so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so seven glucose are added by this chain extending activity and one glucose was added by this glycogen initiator synthesis activity in the previous step so we have now total eight glucose molecule in this glycogen in molecule this compound it is called as a glycogen primer one more thing that all of this bond these are all alpha 14 glycosidic bonds and this and it is called as a non reducing and because the fourth carbon of this glucose will be free which is non reducing carbon only the first carbon of the glucose is reducing one which is located on this side so this is called as a non reducing and this glycogen primer it further acted upon by the enzyme glycogen synthase and this glycogen synthase it adds more glucose to this non reducing end now this glycogen synthase it has some conditions that if that conditions are fulfilled then only glycogen synthase work the first thing it adds glucose only to the non reducing end the second condition is that it adds glucose molecule to only a polyglucose compound polyglucose compound having at least eight glucose molecules so at least eight or eight or more glucose molecules are required so as we can see in this gly uh, glycogen primer there are eight glucose molecule okay so at this end this glycogen synthase will add more glucose here also udp glucose act as a donor of glucose and udp gets released so what will happen this glycogen primer has already glycogenin its oxygen and eight glucose molecules are already there so 5 6 7 and 8 now let's say that glycogen synthase is adding 10 glucose molecule into this so this 10 glucose molecule 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so 10 udp glucose added and 10 udp get release and so this 10 glucose are added into this non reducing end of polyglucose chain so that makes total 18 glucose molecule because 10 glucose added into this step and 8 glucose molecule were already there now glycogen synthase it cannot go on indefinite mode to add more and more glucose there is certain limitation up to that limit this glycogen synthase adds glucose now once glycogen synthase stop working 
at that time one more enzyme comes into the action that is branching enzyme what this branching enzyme does to understand that let's first copy this molecule and paste it over here this branching enzyme it will remove from the non reducing end 5 to 8 glucose molecule so let's suppose for this discussion that 5 glucose molecules are removed from this non reducing end by breaking this alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond and then this chain of 5 to 8 glucose molecule is transferred to some other glucose molecule let's say it is transferred to this glucose so this bond which is formed newly it is called as a alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond whereas initially here this broken bond is the alpha 1 4 so essentially it is transferring the fragment from alpha 1 4 bond to the alpha 1 6 bond so what this branching enzyme had done it had created one more branch and branching point is the alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond and because of that now we have two non reducing end this one is non reducing end and this one is non reducing end so branching enzyme it had increased the branches it had also increased the non reducing end so now as the both chains are now shorter then what will happen again glycosynthase will act on this it will extend the length of this both chain and then once glycogen synthase stop working at that time once again branching enzyme will come it will break down this branch break down this alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond and this branch it will be transferred to some other glucose molecule let's say at this glucose molecule and this branch is transferred to at this glucose molecule and so repeated and sequential action of glycogen synthase and branching enzyme will be carried on and it will ultimately leads to very large molecule of glycogen so let's understand this thing with the help of one concise figure so in the center there is this glycogenin protein now initially there is a formation of primer in the first step th this primer is formed in the second step there is a formation of branches like this this branches further undergo branches so new branches will be like this in the third step this branches will contain sub branches like this then there will be further branches so this branches will go on and on so because of that what will happen more and more non reducing ends will be created so by this repeated branching there is increased number of non reducing end now why these non reducing ends are important it is important for two enzyme one is glycogen synthase and second one is glycogen phosphorylase see we had already seen this glycogen synthase as you can see here glycogen synthase it works only on the non reducing end so if more and more branches are there more and more non reducing ends will be there and more faster this glycogen synthase will be able to work so basically increased non reducing end it increases the speed of this glycogen synthase what about glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme which can break down this glycogen now here also glycogen phosphorylase it works only on this non reducing end so by increasing non reducing ends in the glycogen this glycogen phosphorylase it can act quickly see glycogen synthesis and glycogen phosphorylation or breaking down of the glycogen both needs to be quick why they are required to quick the reason is that whenever we are feeding that we call it as a fed state at that time our blood glucose increases so this glucose must be immediately cleared from the blood so that will be taken care by this glycogen synthase by taking up this glucose and converting it into the glycogen so as this non reducing end they are increasing the speed so glycogen synthase is able to quickly convert this increased glucose into glycogen because of this non reducing ends whereas for the glycogen phosphorylase whenever we are in the fasting at that time there is decrease in the blood glucose so this decrease in the blood glucose must lead to rapid breaking down of the glycogen so that our blood glucose can be maintained so that is rapidly brought about by this glycogen phosphorylase so as now we can understand that speed is very important factor in this two enzyme and it is carried out by this non increase non reducing ends in case of glycogen
Now one more thing that here I had shown only three or four step in this glucose molecule. Actually speaking, total twelve steps of branchings are there. Here in this diagram, I had shown you only four steps of branching, and each of this branch contain at least twelve to fourteen glucose molecules. An entire glycogen molecule it contain approximately fifty five thousand glucose molecules. So that completes our discussion for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss about glycogenolysis, that is breakdown of the glycogen. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.